Hi, I'm Mark Wahlberg, host of Antiques Roadshow, coming to you from Des Moines, Iowa. Don't miss all the fun and excitement as we dig up treasures right in your backyard. With nearly 11 million viewers tuning in each week, Antiques Roadshow is the top-rated program on PBS. Often described as an adventure that is part history lesson and part treasure hunt, the American version of the BBC program that shares the same name is in its 15th season. We are number one in prime time. We have about 10 million viewers a week, which is a lot of people. And it's a proud number for whether it's PBS or another network. That's a lot of viewers, especially in this spread out media landscape. And given the, um, our sisters across the pond, the BBC, who we licensed the show from, are taping their 33rd season, I imagine that um, we've got a long life ahead of us and that I will retire from this show and not the other way around. Marsha Bemko quite literally wrote the book on Antiques Roadshow and for seven years has been the executive producer for the program. Produced by WGBH out of Boston, Antiques Roadshow, as the name implies, is a show from the road. They printed like 500 or 1,000 of them, and I brought it to find out what it's worth. Every year, a handful of cities are chosen to host the show, where a day's worth of taping in each city combines to yield a season's worth of programs. In 2010, 20 new episodes were taped in six cities, from San Diego on the West Coast to Washington, D.C. on the East Coast, and somewhere in the middle, Des Moines, Iowa. First of all, we're producing two things. We produce an event. And for the bulk of the people coming here tomorrow, we provide a public service. And they're not going to be taped, and their object is not going to obtain them any wealth. But we're here to give you some information, and we're proud of that. We also make a television show, and we're going to make 20 new episodes of television this year. Camera three, why don't you do that move now that I was going to have you The Des Moines edition of Antiques Roadshow for its 2011 season was taped August 7th in 2010. But setting up for the taping began early August 6th. 80,000 square feet of space is required for the production of the program. So while Antiques Roadshow is always looking for new cities to visit, not all cities have the capability to host the program. According to Marsha Bemko, it takes an army to produce the show. While the show has a staff of 14 who work year-round on the program, 45 people travel out of Boston to be on location for any show taping. Hired locally are an additional 12 to 15 production people who run camera, floor direct, and assist in lighting and rigging. Uh, the banners are roughly... The show also requires more than 100 volunteers who have the job of keeping things moving. It, it is a show that's not just kind of fun to work on, it's a show that's a lot of fun to work on, and I have yet to ever be bored by Antiques Roadshow. First of all, there's an enormous amount of work. We make it look easy, but there's a lot of work involved with it. Every city, every show we make, I learn something, and I'm still learning. One of the things that Bemco has learned over the years is the need to limit the number of people that will have items appraised during the one-day taping. In Des Moines, 19,192 people applied for tickets to the show, but only 3,000 pairs of tickets were awarded. Thank you very much. Those receiving tickets were selected through a random drawing. Applications for tickets are restricted to one pair per household. The tickets are free, with no tickets given out at the door. Each ticket holder is allowed only two items to bring for appraisal and is told what time to arrive. The goal is to avoid bottlenecks, but still, the lines are long. While the first line might seem like its primary purpose is to prepare you for waiting in lines, it's actually where you find out in which of the categories the two items you brought belong. It's a decorative piece, but it's made out of a real cello, a practice cello. That's why it has the odd shape. And this is my carousel horse that I don't know who the carver is, and I'm hoping to get something about it. It's, I think it's German, but I'm not sure. I once saw a woman bring her whole bedroom set, including the mattress. Um, God bless her. Um, but people will bring, uh, I like to quote one of our experts, I'm going to steal the line from him. 
People will bring their two most precious objects that if their house were on fire, after they saved their family, the two things they would bring are those. So even though they're not worth a lot of money, they are dear to them. They are the objects that are dear to them. So we'll see a lot of heirlooms. And hopefully a lot of one-of-a-kind one kind things that people can't so easily search on the internet. Because we're here to provide something that you can't look up yourself. This was early Lowe's guard. They held it in their teeth. And this strap went around their head. And they bit there. And I have a picture of my grandfather here and the football team. They wore them around their neck on a leather strap. Once your categories are decided, you are directed to another line to which you wait to see one of the 75 to 80 appraisers who are there for the taping of the show. Each is an expert in their field and can either tell you something that you don't know about the item you've brought or know how to find that information out quickly. In many ways, they're treated by fans of Antiques Roadshow like rock stars. In each city the show travels to, an additional allotment of tickets are distributed to the local PBS station for fundraising events. People who purchased those tickets in Iowa were not only guaranteed entrance to the taping, but were also invited to a meet and greet where they could rub elbows with their favorite appraisers. They get very excited and it's love. It's amazing, it's love, you, you can feel it. Um, I get hugs. That's kind of fun. I was not a young person when I started doing this 15 years ago. And then we add on another 15 years. Never in my wildest dreams did I think I would be a senior citizen on national TV. But I will go as long as, as, as I can uh, stand at the table and see the glass, yes. And it hasn't been refinished. You know, every Saturday is kind of like Christmas morning. You don't know what you're going to see. And I've heard so many people say, oh, well, I didn't know what to bring. And they just grabbed something at the last minute. And you know, I always tell them, I said, well, if it was me, I would think about it. And I would bring the thing that I was most curious about. And it might not be something that was super valuable, but it, maybe it's something that the family's real sentimental about, but they want to have more information. And I've actually had people come to the table and I tell them, well, this is probably from the 1920s and people would buy this kind of stuff in department stores or whatever. And at the end, they didn't even want me to tell them the value. They didn't care. So, yes, absolutely. In their minds, it is priceless. In, in terms of what we see, it's a lot easier to carry a cup and saucer than a piano. So we tend to see a disproportionate number of things at the pottery and porcelain table. But be, that, be that, that as it may, some great things come in small packages, and I've seen some marvelous and special things over the years. They had a little piece of that very sticky old white fabric medical tape for the longest time. I just took it off a few years ago, and it had five cents written on it with a pencil. Well, it's a sweet piece of Van Briggle, and we've done Van Briggle on the show. I like that what we see is, is the real deal. I mean, they have really, the producers have gotten so good at filtering out people who pretend they don't know what they have. Uh, and filtering out objects that don't have sufficient value or interest to be on the show, that uh, what you see on television, is, uh, 999 times out of 1,000, is, is honest and, and authentic, and I like that about it. In terms of value at auction today, conservatively, I would estimate it for between $2,500 and $3,500. Wow! Okay, and probably more like $3,000 to $4,000. Awesome! That's wonderful! My mom would be thrilled. They think that maybe only 500 pieces were made while he was alive. Oh, wow. Of the 10,000 to 12,000 items brought to each city on the Antiques Roadshow tour, only 80 to 90 items are selected for possible inclusion in an upcoming episode. If an appraiser thinks that an item is unique enough or the story behind the item is of interest, he or she will contact a picker. The picker first gets the pitch from the appraiser as to why an item should be taped. The picker then interviews the person who brought the item. One of the three pickers is Marsha Bemko. For anybody who's coming to the show, bring something you're truly curious about. Don't try to impress us. We are jaded. We've seen it all. We've seen very valuable things. I have turned down $200,000 objects where the guests came for show and tell and knew exactly what they had. We're here to discover 
America's hidden treasures. The criteria for an item to be selected are not easily met. Statistically, less than 1% of the items seen will be taped for possible inclusion in an upcoming episode. You ready? Here we go. Take one in three, two. Hi, I'm Mark Wahlberg, and you're watching... The host for Antiques Roadshow is Mark Wahlberg. He has been with the show since 2005 and is the fourth person to host the program. When I first got this job, I stopped by the little coffee shop I always stop by every morning on the way after I drop my kids off to school. And a uh, lady says to me, hey, Mark, how's it going? I said, great. She says, uh, what's new? I said, hey, I got a new show. She said, what? She says, I'm going to host Antiques Roadshow on PBS. And uh, as soon as I say it, three people in the place turn around and go, Antiques Roadshow? And I go, yes. Then they don't say a word to me, and they start talking about the show. So I realized at that point that I was sort of inheriting you know, something that America feels they own. And uh, so I've been very grateful. While Mark Wahlberg is the only professional talent on Antiques Roadshow, he's not the program's star. The real stars of the program are the antiques and the stories behind them. That one there I got, I think, in 65 or 66. And I, w I wonder, maybe they, when they signed it, they thought they were signing it for Frank Howard and not plain old Howard. <laughs> <laughs> well, how lucky for you to be... The show is all about unraveling a mystery and the thrill of discovery. It's, in its truest sense, a reality show. This is a reality show because it's a non-scripted program dealing with real people, real items, and truthfully, the vetting process of who ends up on camera and who doesn't is really about finding people who are being authentic. In other words, if you know too much about your item and we can't tell you anything you don't know, it's wonderful you've gained that knowledge, but not particularly something we're putting on the air. So while we like to find those items that are very valuable or a fake and very not valuable, the truth is it, it's the people and the stories connected to the items that's as important as the value. We'd much rather have a $3,000 item with a great story told by a great person than a $20,000 item by somebody who knows everything about it and our appraiser is just nodding and smiling. And as a retail value, I would have no problem saying it was worth between four and $6,000. Wow. That's quite a bit. It is. It is. For something that sat around in the house for years and years and years. The historical integrity of any items selected to be shared on television is checked prior to taping. Then checked again and again and again before any tape segment airs on television. It's one of the neatest folk carvings I've ever seen. I'm really glad you brought it in. Thank you very much. We're going to be an honest show, and the integrity of this show that keeps us on public broadcasting and keeps the audience trusting us is invaluable. And once broken, very hard to, re to repair. We're not going to break that trust. In Des Moines, the four top appraised items for Antiques Roadshow's 2011 season were an extremely rare 1623 Shakespeare first folio, valued at $35,000 to $50,000. And the name of the figure is called a Shapara's bronze and ivory sculpture, valued at forty to sixty thousand dollars. Yeah, she's really beautiful. Thank you. Thanks for bringing her in. A circa 1925 round European cut diamond and platinum ring, valued at sixty to eighty thousand dollars. And another Shapara's statue, this time bronze and marble, valued at one hundred thousand dollars. My goodness, I am beyond shocked. I had, oh, oh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Of the 80 to 90 items selected to be taped, less than 60 will be shared with the television audience. Other items that aren't quite ready for prime time are videotaped and shared over the show's website. And everyone that attends an event is invited to share what they learned about the items they brought at the feedback booth. Antiques Roadshow is sometimes described as a game show where everybody has a prize to begin with. Maisha Benko and the staff of Antiques Roadshow hope they can tell those who attend an event what their prizes were. But over the 15 seasons the show has been on the air, she's found out that most people 
already know that what they've brought in is priceless. Most people, after they get their appraisals, whether it's worth $100 or $100,000, don't sell or do anything with it. They keep it.